Okay, so I just uh, would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to show our work about predicting protein metal binding site with AI for Uniprot. So I imagine most of you know what Uniprot is, but I'm just going a brief overview about our database. So Uniprot is a protein resources which provide protein sequence and functional data for more than 8,000 species. So our main resource is the Uniprot knowledge base of or Uniprot KB, which is composed of two parts. The first section contains all the reviewed Swiss protein entries. These protein entries are curated by experts with information based on experimental data extracted from the scientific literature. We also provide sequence feature annotation. And at the current release, we have about half a million protein entries in this section. The bulk of our entries are contained in the unreviewed tribal entries section. Uh, in this section are protein for which there is no experimental uh, data known, or protein that are waiting for um, curation. And as you can see, there are more than 200 million of protein sequences here. But Uniprot aim is to provide some kind of predicted uh, functional information for those entries. And for this, we use rule-based annotation system. We also import information from the 3D structure database PDB. And with our manually curated rule, which are known as UniRule, we can cover 28% uh, of our tremble entry. We have also two additional uh, systems for the automatic annotation of uh, the tremble entries. The first one is ARBA. This is a multi-class multi learning system which involves also text mining and some uh, rule uh, system as well. And it predicts the function, the protein name, as well as the protein families for those entries. The second one, which is our last ad addition, and we did it this year, it's PROT NLM. It is a collaboration with Google and is a protein natural language model which predicts the protein name from the protein amino, se uh, sorry, the protein amino acid uh, sequence. And together, this two uh, system allows us to provide information, uh, functional information for 28% more entries. So with all this uh, system, we can cover a little bit more than 50% of our tremble entry, but there is still room uh, to go to provide more um, functional information for more entries. So to do this, we, one of our aim is to engage uh, the machine learning and AI con community to not only to improve our current automatic annotations, annotation system, but also to develop new automatic uh, annotation system. And one of our projects is to create computational methods to predict metal binding site across the whole Uniprot. So why did we decide it to focus on the annotation of metal binding site? So metal play a central role for protein by stabilizing uh, their structure promoting an enzymatic reaction, but they also can act as messenger of open the binding to the protein. And knowing the position of the metal binding site is important for disease because there are a lot of variants that affect uh, this uh, binding site. It's also important for drug design, especially for enzymes, and also in the biotechnology field. This, this is how our automatic, oh, sorry. This is how our annotation of metal banding site lo look like in a protein entry in the website. So for each uh, metal banding site, we provide the residue and its position, as well as its uh, description. And for this, we use the metal identifier from the small molecule ontology KB. And obviously, we provide the source for the evidence. So as I said, uh, metal banding protein are important, and this is reflected by their number in our reviewed Swiss protein trees. We have 21% uh, protein that binds metal, 60% have binding site annotated, and most of the information comes from experimental data, either uh, 3D structure or mutagenesis, mutagenesis experiments. 
And we also uh, use sequence analysis to predict those sites. But what happened with the unreviewed tremble entries, how well our automatic uh, syst annotation system are doing, and as you can see, not so well. We have only 8% of predicted metal binding protein and less than 3% uh, <coughs> uh, protein at their binding site annotated. And to try, this suggests that there is really room for improvement. And for this, we have set up a challenge for the AI community, is to create accurate and scalable computational methods to predict metal binding site across the whole Uniprot. So in February last year, we announced the challenge. The participants were invited uh, to register. And then in uh, July last year, we opened the first round and we released the training and test data sets. So for the training data sets, we provide two types, the positive training data set, and this includes proteins in SwissProt that have metal binding site annotated. And this set was divided in two. The first one contained all the protein entries with metal binding site independently of the source of the evidence. And the second set contained only the protein entries that have their metal binding site annotated with experimental evidence. The negative training data set contained, again, Swiss protein trees that have an annotation score above three, but they don't contain metal binding related keyword, co-term, and no metal mention in our caution comments that we have in our entry. The test data set for which the participants had to uh, predict the to make their prediction contain all the Swiss protein trees and a selection of tremble entries that have protein evidence score above four, meaning that we excluded pro uh, protein fragment. And these tremble entries were either entries that have no metal-related keyword or go term, or protein that have metal-related keyword and go term, but no metal binding site annotation prediction. And among this last set, curator um, selected 65 tremble entries for manual annotation. And these were going to be used for the evaluation set. And here is also the format uh, for the data set. It's a FASTA format with the numerical header. Uh, sorry, a numerical identifier as a header. So, um, in February of this year, uh, the first round was closed and the participants submitted their uh, prediction. And so far we have four teams that have submitted prediction and we are currently running the evaluation process. And here is just uh, the format uh, that the participant had to use to uh, provide their prediction. And we hope if everything goes at, according to plan to announce the performance in July, and later on we will evaluate the feasibility of the selected method for Uniprod production pipelines. And this is all the people that participate uh, in the project, especially Erman and Visho, and that's all also the curator that are uh, curating the evaluation data set. And we're funding by the NIH and EMBO. And this is all the people that uh, contribute to the Uniprod database. Thank you for your attention. Hi, wonderful talk. It was really great. Um, so I actually went to Elizabeth's talk, um, and I happened to also get in on this one. So I'm naturally going to ask, are you also uh, intending on employing the uh, NPLs, the natural product-like scoring method, to the metal binding? Sorry, I didn't catch the last. OK, so is that better? Should I? <laughs> Sorry, I know there's a lot of crowd noise out there. Um, but the NPL, the natural product-like scoring, that was, so they've been employing that for the Swiss Prod and things, so I wanted to ask about this, so Tremble and for metal binding, natural product-like binding. You don't know about the scoring method? I think I don't, um... How, can you, you can hear me, right? No, no, it's not a microphone problem. 
Oh, 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 okay, 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 that's better. So the NPL, or natural product-like score. So maybe I can answer, because I was in both talks as well, and I was involved in the, the uh, ligand reannotation. So the natural product likeness score is a, uh, it's a measure of how similar a chemical is to the space of natural products versus the space of synthetic chemicals. So you have machine learning classifiers which are trained on synthetic data sets, drugs, and uh, that's one data set, and the other data set is naturally occurring metabolites, and then these classifiers can distinguish between the two. So in the other talk, we saw that actually, if you compare the set of uh, ligands in Uniprot to the space of ligands in other databases like PDB, and you get similar uh, results if you look at Drug Bank, the two data sets are very dissimilar because in Uniprot, we focus on the curation of natural products, naturally occurring metabolites that you find in living organisms. I've never actually looked at the data for metals, but I would imagine that they uh, are probably not particularly high scoring in terms of natural product likeness because they're so small. So these things work on substructures, uh, substructures in natural products versus synthetics. So metals will be out on a limb somewhere. So it's not really relevant to the work that's being done here. And, and uh, I mean, personally, I did have a question actually, um, which is, you know, have you looked at things like alpha fill? Oh, he's telling me to cut it, okay. 